how's it going? This is Roy from RateMyFuneral.com, that was Rate by the way. How's it going? It's been for like forever. Uh, it's been so long I've actually forgotten what you look like. Anyway, let's get back into things. Um, running well behind just because I've been so busy doing a billion and one squillion things. So um, I wanted to do something short, sharp, snappy, not too long, um, something really simple. Um, and I've been working on something specifically for uh, a little project where I had a speaker um, bouncing with some ball bearings in it and that sort of thing. Um, so I thought, let's just quickly do that as a tutorial video. We'll put it up, see what you think. If you don't like it, oh, um, if you do, Right, let's hop on in, let's get started. Okay, so let's find somewhere to begin. Um, I'm going to make an assumption that you have played with cinema already. Um, I'll try and not go too fast though, just in case, but uh, we're gonna start off, we're gonna create an object here, a tube, or tube if you're American. Um, I'm gonna go up to here, display Gurad shading, Gurad, Gurad, Gurud. Anyone can actually confirm that, Gurad. I'm not sure what that word is. Shading lines. That puts on a bit of geometry detail for us. So I'm going to make this a bit smaller. Um, and let's make it a bit thinner. This is going to be our speaker outside. Now, uh, an important note with this is, obviously, if you're going to get close to it, you want to watch these um, edges. We haven't got too much geometry here. So you will tend to see these kind of straight lines on here. If you want to reduce that, there's a couple of ways. One is you can increase the height segments like so, or you can stick the whole thing, hold down Alt and click on the subdivider. Obviously that puts shed loads of geometry on it. So I want to use that if absolutely necessary uh, in this case. So let's go for something a little bit halfway, so about 50. Uh, I would have thought we'll be fine for what we're doing here. Um, just look at that tube. That is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, so that's going to be the rim. <laughs> um, what we now want to do is create the kind of, uh, what is it? Um, it's like a, a rubber seal between the, uh, the cone of the woofer and the, um, and the rim. So I'm going to use this torus. Uh, I'm just trying to get this about right. I'm not doing this accurately by any long shot of the imagination. It's purely eyeballing. So, um, and I'm kind of making this up as I go along because I can't really remember what I did last time. So if we make that about the same rig se ring segments, you see it should all line up quite neatly. Um, okay, so for the inner cone, uh, there's a ton of ways you can do this. Um, what I like to have is something that has a slight lip, then it starts to curve in. So the way I do that is create a circle, uh, change the plane so that it's on X, Z. Now that's just dropped in there a bit. So we can hit T and just shrink that down a bit so we can see what we're doing. The next thing I'm going to do is add a rectangle and shrink that right down. Okay, and in our circle, we're gonna go and hold down Alt and select Sweep and drop our rectangle in there as well. And that basically sweeps that rectangle around that circle. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because, I want, like I say, I want a slight lip. Um, so this is the way I found to do this. So let's grab our rectangle and we will, uh, we don't want it too deep and too wide. So about there, it should be fine. And then what I'll do is make this rectangle editable. So I press C, that's now editable. Now, if I go back to, uh, the live selection button and go to points mode, our rectangle is actually shown in the middle there so we can see this. Now here's an interesting thing, we can actually change the shape of that just by altering the shape of this rectangle. Perfect. So what we want to actually do is grab this bottom one here which is this edge here and just pull that out a bit. Uh, let's hop into the sweep tag and just put our fong down a bit to 50 and that will just make that edge sit a bit nicer and won't try and smooth it out too much. Um, the next step is this underside edge. Uh, no, actually it'll be this one, which is this top corner. So we want to just bend that in. Now there's a couple of things we could do here. Um, we could just have it kind of like that, which is all right. Um, or we can actually right click on here and we can do soft interpolation. We're going to have to zoom in so we can actually see what that's done. Um, but Ooh, hello. It's oh, why is this? It's uh, 
right s brings us back to it there we go um and that's basically given us this angle now we can't adjust uh this um these little handlebars with the point the live selection tool we have to go to the move tool and then we can actually grab that bar there and do something a bit like that which will give it a bit of a curve obviously we don't want this coming out so we hold shift and grab this handle and we can aim that straight down if we just zoom out we can kind of see what we've done there see we've added a bit of a curve to it so it's possibly a bit too much but I'm not too worried to be fair I'm rushing this because I don't want this tutorial to take too long so let's grab that sweep and slide that down um, so about there and we'll get that circle and we'll just expand that up a bit um, and maybe down a little bit so hopefully now you can kind of see what I was saying um, we've got we've got this bit of a lip which is what I want because I think that looks good I might make the lip sticky out a little bit more so if we go back to our rectangle we're still in points mode we can just move that edge that way a little bit and perhaps move that just up a touch right great <clears throat> okay so what is next uh, next is the inner inner cone uh, again there's lots of ways to do this um, I'm gonna go with the what is essentially the quickest way so create a sphere make it a hemisphere and rotate it there we go now obviously that is a bit large isn't it um you don't get many speakers with that kind of deep cone so i want to uh, squish it in now the problem is if i grab the scale tool and do just that handle it does the whole thing and the reason for that is because it's a parametric object so what we have to do is make it editable press c there we go. Ah, now the reason that's done that is because we're still in points mode. So we go back to live um, object mode, I think, or model mode as it's now known. Um, and now when we grab this green handle, we can actually pull the whole thing up a bit. And that's great. So that's a little bit better. That's domed just about as much as I want it to be. Now, the one thing I did do wrong there was I made it editable before I added a few extra bits of geometry. So it's no big deal. Um, we can fix this. Uh, we can either undo and go back and add them, or I'll just uh, use a, the subdivide option. Um, the one thing I do want to do, though, is I want to get this edge so it matches a bit better. So it's a bit deep at the moment. So what we can do is go to polygon mode, press UL, and then that will give us the loop selection tool. We can grab that outer loop and just hit delete and get rid of it. OK, great. Um, back to normal and we'll just expand that out and get it so it's about in the right place like i say there are there are to be fair better ways of doing this uh, to make a a better edge but uh, i'm in a hurry so now that we've got that we can just hold down alt click on this one and then that will give us a slightly better edge brilliant it's worth doing this uh, when you're dealing with something that's quite a few polygons i mean to be fair this scene isn't going to get much busier so um the subdivision surface is not such a problem but for the editor you can actually put that down to one and that will only display that many polygons during the editor but it will do th three times that many in um in uh, when you actually render it out so it will be kind of that level so we can just do that and to be fair i mean looking at two we don't really need it to be any more than that so we'll just leave the render version at two as well um and the editor version at one so um if we put on uh, a fair ambient occlusion we can kind of see the how it's looking at the moment it's getting there it's definitely getting there it's uh, this edge is maybe a little bit iffy so we can just uh, maybe scale that a touch more and there we go we've got a bit of a a bit of a, uh, a kind of separation but I mean to be fair that probably is about right so we now need our dome for the middle i'm just going to use the same sort of technique again so make a sphere turn it into a hemisphere i'll put the uh i'll put the uh segments up on this one uh, shrink it down place it in the middle again it's it's a bit a bit nipply so we'll uh squash that down there we go cool okay i'm pretty happy with that so we've built our speaker really quickly, really easily. Um, we now just need to divide it up a little bit. 
So our inner stuff, we'll highlight all that. I'll press Alt and G, and we'll call that mid woofer. Woofer. And then these outer bits, we'll call nope, outer rim. <laughs> um, and then what that enables us to do is we can animate this inner section. So it goes boom, 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 which is what we want. So um, in order to do that, we can use a sound effector. Um, a sound effector won't affect this collection of objects, though, because it needs to be a MoGraft object of some form. So the way you can do that is if you put it into a fracture object or a cloner. My personal preference is cloner because I see some occasional, some slight odd um, effects with fracture objects. So I just stick it in a cloner. Now, obviously, that creates clones, um, but you can just set it to one. Job's done. There we go. We have our cloner. Um, the next thing I want to do then is with cloner selected, actually, let's name that midwoofer so it doesn't get confusing. It is still the midwoofer. Um, keep that selected and go to effect. Uh, it's in here somewhere. I can't see it. You'll be seeing it shouting. There it is. Sound. Okay, so just a quick look at the sounds. You've got obviously the normal style effector um, options uh, along with a couple of extras. So you've got your parameter. This is basically what's going to be modified. Now, funnily enough, by default, it's about what we want. Maybe a bit more than we want, which you'll see in a second. Um, but you can do a kind of couple of things here. Um, in the effector, you've got the strength. You can add your sound file. And then you've got a few extra cool kind of useful options there. But let's... Um, Let's add a sound file. So I just grabbed um, this drum beat from a uh, from a website I visited. So I've just got this um, this really simple drum beat. It's just a four on the floor uh, drum beat. Um, it'll ask if you want to copy it into the document path. If you've saved it, it will place it into that saved folder. I haven't saved this, so I've got nowhere to save it. So I'll just say no. Um, down the bottom here, you've got scrub sound. Now, basically, that means that if I hit play. It'll do it. Now, the problem is you're in kind of territory where it's really difficult to tell exactly what's happening here because of the live viewer frame skipping and that sort of thing. But you can see it is kind of, it's doing something, but whether that's exactly what you want it to do is a difficult thing to tell at the moment. So let's just give ourselves a few more frames. 250. Um, I haven't worked out all the, the looping and anything like this. I literally, I'm just going to make a little clip of, of that, basically. Um, but that's basically doing what we want it to do. Although the uh, the woofer is going a bit high, so 50. Um, just to show you. So, for example, you could actually use scale. So let's say we put that to four and press play. The whole thing will go boom, boom, and get bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller and that sort of thing. Yeah. So you can do quite a lot with this. It's, it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, you can even add rotation if you want. <laughs> but uh, we don't want to. So let's just bring this right down um, to about 15. Great, right. And when this uh, first kicks in, it always jumps up quite a bit. So I'm just going to have it for the first um, sort of few frames, I'm going to have it a bit lower than I would normally because then that should sit about right. Like I say, unfortunately, it's difficult to tell that that's timing out right, so the only way to do it is really render it and test it. You know what? I reckon 244 might give us a good loop there. I was completely wrong. Let's go 248. Let's see, ready? It's all gone horribly wrong. Anyway, forget that. Um, another note, if you want to hear it without the jumping, um, if you click on this button here and click all frames, basically now Cinema won't render every frame in the editor for you um, while you're previewing. So the sound will be okay, you'll see. And this is... That's giving us a much better idea. Uh, I want to get that about right. Um, try, I reckon, 228. Let's try that. That's better. 
There we go, we've pretty much looped it now. Obviously you could do that scientifically and work it out, but we don't care right now. Um, okay, so because we're dealing with sound, an important thing to do is go Control D, go into Project Settings and make sure that your frames per second are the same as what you're going to render it out as. Now I'm going to render it out at 24 frames per second, so I want to change that there. This will obviously change to 190 frames, and we'll just check that that's all still fine. Brilliant. Right. So I'll just show you this. We won't do it in this one. Uh, this is something for you to go away and try. Basically, down here, you've got a filter section. So if we turn that on, um, if you look carefully here, you'll see there's a little bar. Let's make that a bit bigger, and you should see that a bit a bit better so so this area here what we're saying is only process in that area now if we play a little bit of footage you can kind of see what's happening here that's our base and then our highs are over here so what you could actually do is build a speaker with say two woofers and a, like a, or one woofer and a tweeter um, so you have your woofer with a sound effector just set up to down here and then a tweeter just set up here you know position a bit higher a bit smaller and then they would move to their correct frequency, which can make quite a quite a cool effect. You know, you can build a proper working speaker. Um, you can cut these off so you can sort of limit. So now we're sort of a little bit more accurate on the bass there, and we can compress it maybe and push some of that sound out a little bit more. There's kind of lots of things you can do with that. Um, but I think just for this, this is kind of working quite well. Maybe slightly less here. Brilliant. Okay. So, um, that is essentially it. But if you want to stick around, I might as well just do a few extra little bits. Um, none of this is anything special. I'm just going to texture it, light it, and render it out. So, if you're bored now, fine. Don't, don't, I won't be upset if you want to go away. If you want to keep watching, then do. Right. <laughs> so, let's, um, let's have a look. First thing I want to do is light it because at the moment it's looking naff um, so I'm just going to use uh, Infidio Pro available from my website that was a shameless plug I know um, okay and let's create a box for it uh, what's going to be the easiest way to do this right I'm going to do it rectangle um, move that up a bit and change the plane so it's flat and extrude it okay and we'll just drop the extrude down a bit, something like that. Okay, and then I want to sit this on the floor. About there. Brilliant. Okay, I am going to stop saying okay. I'm going to round the edges a little bit just to make it look cool. And we'll make it a bit longer like that. Um, let's raise our speaker and our outer rim so it's sitting on it. Now, obviously, there is a bit of a problem here. Not only is our speaker not wide enough, uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make that really wide. And then I'm going to duplicate it. You could do this using a cloner, but for speed, I'm just going to do that. Okay, and then we make sure that that one is also, so they should both be going. Uh, we'll check in a second. Oh, hello. Um, we need to cut holes in our box though before we do too much more because we can't see our speakers. So let's raise this one up, change the plane, XZ, uh, XZ, sorry. Uh, the way we can best do this is because we used a, a, um, a rectangular spline to create this box, we can actually just cut this out using a connect object. So if we go with that rectangle selected, we go to here and connect, hold down Alt, it'll put it in it, put the, the circle in there. Um, hang on before we put the circle in there let's just put the circle inside of that rectangle and we'll zero out the y-axis that will put it on the same plane there we go and that, that cuts it out for us so we now put that there and place that there we can shrink that down a bit as well so it fits cool and we'll have a copy of that circle so click hold control drag release and just put that there Geometry wise, I know this isn't the best way to do it, but it's certainly the quickest. So that gives us our two speakers. And if we hit play, they're both going brilliant. 
Okay, um, our extrude, I just want to give a slightly nicer edge to, so fill it cap, we'll do it both sides, um, and maybe two and two, three, just to give it a few more steps and constrain it so it doesn't get bigger or smaller. Um, that circle is not quite over, there we go. Right, that one, and yeah, that one seems okay. Right, brilliant. Um, I might just raise our speakers just a touch, there we go. And just for tweaking, uh, like I say, I'm not intending to spend too long on this, but I'm kind of messing around now. Um, what am I doing? In the outer rim on our tube, uh, we could actually go fill it um, and just reduce that right down to sort of two and maybe one. There we go. And that just gives it a slightly nicer edge. Cool. Okay. So obviously we haven't textured it yet. Let's just see what side we're sitting at. So the, our lighting is over there. So let's just go into Infidio and lighting and rotate all lighting. We'll put it sort of about there. We have our key light, our fill light, and then our overhead light is all sitting in the right place. So that's good. Okay. We'll just have a quick look. Cool, that's looking wonderful. Um, we need to texture it up a little bit. Um, so let's make it really, really, really simple. So our speaker is a black shiny one. So color black, uh, maybe just slightly off black. Uh, reflectance, if you're using R15 or below, then just go to the uh, reflection channel, turn that on, and then add a Fresnel, um, like we kind of always do. Um, in this case, I'll just use the legacy one with uh, Fresnel, just to keep it simple for now. There we go. Um, and I'm gonna turn down that specular a bit. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so that gives us our shiny plastic. So we'll put that on our speaker box. We'll put that on our tube. Um, and I think I might put it on our sweep to get a bit of a shine there. Okay. Um, and then I'll just make a copy of that. Hold, click, hold, control, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Go to color, and I'm gonna make this one white. Cool. And put that on our inner cone which obviously you can't really see because it was already kind of white. Uh, oh, what have I missed here? Um, outer rim, boom, there we go. Uh, and now I just want to make a kind of rubbery look one. Um, there are some nice ways to make rubber on this, but I'm in a bit of a hurry. So I'm just going to remove that one, go to bump, go noise, I don't know, eight. Um, Make that a bit smaller. I've got to turn on bump first. There we go. Um, make that a lot smaller. Just so it gives it a bit of a, a rough edge. Maybe change this black to slightly off gray a little bit. And that kind of gives us a, a simple quick rubber. Rubber. Okay, and let's put that on our inner sphere. Our torus. Torus and inner sphere. Great. So let's have a quick look. And that's looking pretty nifty. There's our speakers. Excellent, right, okay. So let's get a slightly nicer angle on that. Cool. Wonderful. Right, um, my final thing that I think I might do is just go into video and turn on the floor reflection. Um, about 50 with 1% blur or so. Won't make a huge amount of difference, but it'll just add a bit of difference to the ground because we'll get some slight lighting changes and stuff. There we go, and we get this nice shine down here. Great, okay. Uh, Anti-aliasing, we can put up to best. Um, 
and that's probably going to do it for this. Uh, you could go into the physical render and do it all with that. Let's just see how much. Cool. Okay. That's grand. So, what do I want to do? I mean, that's it, really. Now, if I render that out, that'll just sit and boom, 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 boom. But, you know, or if you want to have a bit of fun, uh, let's just have a few minutes just to have some fun. So, let's go sphere. Right. Um... I'm going to create a camera and I'm going to leave that there. Oops, hello. And then I'm going to go into this sphere and shrink it down. Now I'm going, I want to, uh, I'm thinking like ball bearings here. So let's reduce the segments of this sphere. So they're only like five to, for speed. Um, and we'll right click, add rigid body. And then go. And obviously that just falls straight through. Infidio's floor's already done, so that's fine. But, um, we need to sort of add some uh, tags to this setup here so that it knows to react with it. So our extrude, which is our, let's call this speaker box. Um, let's put in video down the bottom as well, along with our camera to keep things tidy. And let's close these up for the moment. So our sphere has got its tag, our speaker box. We want to do simulation uh, re collider body, but because we've cut the hole in it, what will happen is that will sit there. So obviously we don't want that. So we need to go into our tag and change the shape from automatic to static mesh. And then that means that it will fall through. Brilliant. So that's the box done. Uh, we can then pretty much do the same with the outer rim and outer rim. Our mid woofer um, will be kind of the same, although it will be moving mesh. And we can put that on both of those. In theory, that should be everything we need. Brilliant. And that makes our ball bounce around. Cool. Okay. So now, what can we do with this? Um, maybe we can shrink this ball down a little bit more. Um, and put that inside of a an emitter. Okay, let's just turn that emitter around. And now if you just hit play on the meta, all it does is fire these kind of crap lasers out. It's not really what we want, so what we need to do is tick this show object button. There we go. And now we're filling up our speaker with ball bearings. Now I just, oh, spotted a problem there. So our outer rim isn't working properly. I would hazard a guess that what we need to do, we can select both of these, is go to here and do collision compound shape. That should make our outer rim work a little bit better. Great. Um, so we've got one emitter here, which we'll put just above it. Let's say for the for the first, say 75 frames and start at 20. So it doesn't start instantly. Let's tell it to stick 100 out and see how many days, probably too many. Yeah. Um, if we come back to here, turn on all frames again, that will start rendering that properly. <laughs> That's quite cool. Um, tell you what we'll do. In our sphere, we'll just turn up our bounce to, say, 60. Just so they're a little bit bouncier. Um, that's probably a few too many, to be fair. So let's reduce that down to about 75, 75. Same as the subdivision surface. The editor, that's how many it will do in this preview, and that's how many it will do in the final render. But I like to keep those about the same, unless it's something absolutely crazy, just so that we can kind of see what's happening. Cool, okay. So that's pretty nifty. So we can now grab this emitter, control C and copy it, and actually put one over this speaker as well. Now in my preview, I'm guessing this is probably gonna go a little bit naff. Great. So let's create a texture for this. Let me stop that as well. Um, obviously they're ball bearings, so reflectance. Um, again, just turn on reflection in, in R15. I'm just gonna turn on reflectance there. Put that on our spheres. Now there's a there's a bunch of cool and amazing things you can do with this. Now obviously, because of our anti-aliasing, 
this isn't going to be quick to render all of these out. That is the downside to adding balls to everything. Um, but this is going to look so cool when it's done. So what I think I'm going to do is just set it to go. Um, I'm going to bugger off to work, go get some stuff done. And then when I come back, this should be all done and ready. And we can then look at the, uh, the final messing around because this is looking pretty cool at the moment. So uh, let's see. Let's see how we're going to do this. I might actually add a bit of depth of field in here. So, all right, this is going to end up taking a bit longer than I was anticipating. So let's click, uh, let's go back to our render settings and let's set um, our renderer to physical. Um, physical, we're going to turn on depth of field. Let's set the quality to medium. Um, you know, I'm going to leave this running today, so it's not really a big issue for me. You know, if you need it quicker, do low. You can tweak these settings, um, but I, you know, I, I, you know, a, a bit of a render time. It's not the end of the world if you can just leave it going. Um, sorry, and uh, let me tell you what I'm doing here. Right, so output. Let's change the output. Um, 720 HD will do perfectly for me. So it's 25 frames per second. I want it to render all frames. Um, the width and uh, that's all fine that's all fine uh, the save this is the location so I changed it so it's a JPEG uh, JPEG PNG sequence so I just need to choose somewhere to put it so um, I've got a folder here we'll create a folder called render um, and then we'll maybe say oh not new folder what am I doing uh, get rid of that one and then we'll call it maybe speakers 01 great Okay, um, that's all fine. We don't need to worry about this. We're not going to worry about doing with multipass. I'm just going to use the physical depth of field. Um, we've got ambient occlusion, occlusion on. Yeah, that's all pretty much fine. Brilliant. So um, select our camera. Let's see. I want to angle this down a little bit so we see some of this lovely movement. Um, maybe. See, we could turn it on its side. If you right click and hold this, you can actually kind of turn it about a bit. But I don't know, uh, camera, let's do um, something like a 50 mil. Zoom back out a bit. Do you know what? I prefer things going that side, but that doesn't look quite right today. So we're gonna go that side. Okay. Um, physical, let's make it something like 0 0.4. I wanna get some nice depth of field on there. Um, the position of the focus, I do want roughly in the middle. So if we place a null, it's kind of hard to see. Let's just come out of the camera. If we place a null right in the center there, um, and then go to the camera object and set the focus point as that null, that will give us uh, quite a nice uh, focal point in the center. Let's get some ball bearings in there. See how that's looking. Okay, so we've definitely got a bit of depth of field going on there. Okay, so that's uh, looking pretty nifty. Um, I want to, what do I want to do? Um, What do I want to do? Um, I've forgotten. I think maybe just add a little bit of camera motion. Um, this is really going to end up taking a lot longer than I intended, but let's add the motion camera tag to the camera so it moves about a bit. Uh, what we can do is with the camera selected, hold down Alt and select Null. We put the camera into a null. Right click on the camera and do motion camera, no, motion camera tags, that's the one. Motion camera, boom. Okay. Hey, now by default, it sets your height and your parallax a little bit funky. So let's just zero all of these out so our camera goes back to where it was. And I think what I might do is position it so that at position one, the parallax is there. And then at the end, the position is about there. So it kind of moves across as it's playing. So it's kind of like this. There we go. It just makes it feel a little bit less kind of stale and static. And we'll just do a quick test render, make sure that that's looking as it should. Uh, 
I mean, <laughs> you could do lots of things with this, like moving the camera about and having different cuts and different angles. I think what I might do is start off with the null there. So let's keyframe that null there. And then on the final frame, we'll have the null there. So keyframe it there as well. And then that's going to move our focus point across the speaker as we move along. Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you what, let's go physical and put that down to 1.3, just make it a little bit more. Uh, the null, if we go into animation layout up here, we can actually grab that null and move that in. So maybe at frame 25, it starts to move over and up until about 50. So therefore it starts there, it plays for a little bit, and then it starts to move across. You know what, let's bring that in a bit more as well. There. So we should get a bit of a focal sweep. That I can't test obviously until it's done. So let's, we'll find out about that near at a time. Um, the other thing I want to do, motion camera, dyn motion, that's the one. Um, just put these all to about something like that is what I tend to do. Because that standard motion is a little bit harsh. So we're not on a boat. Brilliant. Right, final tip before we get on. Um, press Control D and go Dynamics and bake the cache. Now, this is going to take a minute, but we're going to do it anyway. The reason that we're doing that is so that if we have to stop for whatever reason and we want to render out again from halfway through, the dynamics will stay the same. Um, there we go. So the dynamics are now all done. So now that's what will happen every single time. So that's great. Okay, brilliant. Do, 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 do. Right, we are ready, I think. So what I'm going to do is set that rendering. That's grand. Um, all right, and that's going to render out. Uh, I'll leave it going. Um, I won't make you sit and watch it, but what I will do uh, is I'm going to use the tool that is available in the shop for free called Calc My Render. And this was written by a good friend of mine, Mr. Adam Owen, uh, author of this best-selling beer crystal can radio, beer re in video. Um, he, he made a book about a radio thing. It's really good. Um, it's on Amazon. Check it out. It's how to build a crystal radio with just like a beer can and parts and stuff. It's, if you're into all that science -y, geeky stuff, it's great. Um, it's also good for kids. But anyway, sorry, um, I'm waffling. So Calc My Render. This is something that um, between us we came up with because of the fact that I, I'm terrible at maths. I'm assuming you might be as well, but you probably aren't, but I really am. Um, and I always have this nightmare of working out how long something's going to take to render. So, you know, what I now do with my calc the render thing is I look at how long an average frame is going to take. Now, bear, bear in mind, this is a frame without any of the balls um, and it's going to take 44 seconds. Okay, so... If I go in here and I put him, let's up it a bit. Say we're going to say it's going to take 55 seconds, and we are on, we are doing frame. Well, we've now got one frame done, so we're starting at frame one, um, and we're going to go up to frame 190, and then basically hit that, and it will tell you how long it's going to take to render this out. So two and a half, two, well, three, just under three hours, um, approximately, to render this out. I think that's great because it just saves me having to try and work that out all the time. It drives me nuts. So like I say, that's available in the shop um, and it's completely free. Just add it to the basket, check out, and it doesn't ask, for, ask you for payment or anything. So uh, yeah, have a look at that. It's really good. Um, this is the new version, which I think we have either just released or we're just about to release. But yeah, keep your eye out. It's, it's really useful. Simple little tool. Anyway, so that's now going. Uh, I'm going to leave that to it and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so that's finished rendering out now, and um, by the Calc My Render, um, two hours, 54 minutes. The actual thing took two hours, 57 minutes, so that's not too bad. All right, so there was one thing I did have to stop it and change because I realized I didn't do, which was the uh, collision compound shape on all of these moving parts uh, to make sure that the balls interacted with them correctly. So I did do that. Um, let's see, uh, da, da, da. so what we're going to do, we've rendered it out now, 
um, and it seems to have worked, I believe. So we can see that the balls are getting bounced around by the uh, speakers. That's great. So what do we do with this now? We've got this image sequence. Um, let's open it up in After Effects and see what we can do. So After Effects here, um, if you're importing a sequence, you must go to File, Import, File. You can't import a sequence by just dragging it into there, otherwise it'll only bring in the first one. And then all we do is select the first one and click Import. And there you can see that we've got this many frames, 0 through to 0, 0190. Now, if we look here, we can see that by default, it's picked up at 30 frames per second, which if you remember, we changed. So we need to go to Interpret Footage Main and set that to 25 so that it matches, so that our sound stays in sync which I'm hoping it does. Um, now we need to drag that into a new composition. So there's the icon here for new composition. If we drag that in, that will take all those default settings, not default settings, but those settings. So it's 720 and it's 25 frames per second and it's automatically the length of the clip. So we've only done seven seconds. It's just to give us an idea of what we're doing here. The next thing we want to do is get the sound in. Now that we can just literally just drag our file in like that and just stick it on like so. Now, um, let's just see what happens, I guess. Uh, if I just make this fit a little better and hit pre-render. Pre uh, what is this? Um, RAM preview, that's the word I was looking for. So this will chuck it into the RAM and then start playing. That's cool. That seems to work perfectly. So that was exactly what we wanted to do with it. So obviously now that we've got that, we could then go maybe into new uh, adjustment layer, uh, effect, color correction, curves, uh, color correction, tint. Um, perhaps just put a, um, a little bit of a tint on it. Uh, punch that up, punch that down. Make sure that it's above our scene so we can actually see what we're doing. Let's get some of the balls in there. Uh, just a little bit of brightness in there. Perhaps punch that blue out a little bit more. Yeah, something like that. Um, we could do one of my favorite things, which is to use the ellipse tool. Uh, effect, uh, color correction, exposure, and then just sort of pull that down a little bit. Invert the mask, press F for feather, and then just feather that out. That just gives it a bit of a, a bit of a, a, a vignette. And then that's pretty much it. Obviously none of that was essential just then, I was just literally playing around, but even still, that's, done, that's basically done exactly what we wanted it to do. We've, uh, we've made our speaker with our two woofers and we can see what's happening by the way they're interacting with the balls. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so there you go. Go on and play and do stuff and if you make anything cool, let me know. You can let me know on my Facebook, uh, Google+, um, Twitter, uh, on the main site you can comment uh, on the tutorial pages um, if you haven't visited the site please go ahead and have a look um, you know I've put a lot of work into this site make it really cool um, I haven't really been on actually since I did the big revamp so I've completely changed a lot of this so now obviously there's the new shop um, and the shop contains both um, premium items and free stuff so you just go on um, just add these to your basket these free things check out don't put any credit card details in and they're yours. They're yours to download and get. Like I say, there's Calc My Render. Um, there's a wooden car, USB stick, the Xbox One model. Um, so there's a few things and obviously I'm gonna be adding more things to this um, as and when uh, they're available. So yeah, so please check that out. Um, also, obviously FAQ, some questions in there that I get asked all the time, quite useful. Um, what microphone do you use? That comes up quite a lot. Uh, so it's all in there. Uh, yeah, so hope, <clears throat> excuse me, hopefully um, you'll come and you'll get something out of this. Uh, and like I say, you can access all of the, um, the, the social networking sites from there, get to all these uh, older style tutorials, bunch of stuff on there. 
enough self-promotion now I think it's time for you to go make some cool stuff and then send them post them whatever share them with the world cool catch you later